Here's your weather video for this Sunday, November the 19th. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray, and a progressively wetter pattern possible for Alabama. And that's not a bad thing, uh, given our flash drought that we've been in for the past few weeks and months. Starting off this morning uh, with uh, what expected temperatures will be for morning lows across Alabama as I record this on Saturday night. For early Sunday morning, low temperatures by morning uh, should be in the uh, 40s across much of the area. Of course, those normally colder locations will probably record a few middle and upper 30s. Uh, could be a little light frost uh, in a few areas, but it's going to be a beautiful day today across Alabama, upper uh, upper 60s for the Tennessee Valley, uh, temperatures there in the lower and middle 70s uh, across uh, much of the rest of central Alabama. This is the upper pattern across North America. I'm going to use the European uh, from yesterday morning because I think it has a better handle on what to expect. We've got a trough there over eastern Canada, another trough off of the uh, southeast Atlantic coast, ridging in the middle, which we're benefiting from here in Alabama, uh, with an upper trough there over the west, which will play into our weather as we go through time. And uh, moving the model through time, we see uh, those systems along the east coast moving out. The system there in the uh, southwestern United States moves into the central and southern plains and into the Midwest by late Monday night and Tuesday. This positively tilted trough will bring uh, a cold front toward Alabama uh, that will arrive here most likely late Tuesday into Wednesday, uh, setting the stage for cooler temperatures as we head toward Thanksgiving and also giving us a chance of rain for Monday night and Tuesday, along with the potential, especially to the west of Alabama, for some severe weather. We'll talk about that in just a minute. The uh, subtropical ridge begins to set back in over the western Caribbean, southwestern Atlantic, and begins to protect those areas. Uh, this trough shears out as it continues to push to the southeast here by Wednesday. But uh, on its western end, another system moves out of Mexico into southern Texas and along the Gulf Coast um, by Thursday. Uh, and as it does, it could bring us a few showers uh, Thursday night into early Friday. We'll be watching for that. That rain chance uh, looks fairly small, but uh, we'll deal with a few showers as we transition from Thanksgiving into Black Friday. Another system getting its act together there in the Four Corners region by Friday. And uh, that system uh, will combine forces with that low over southern Canada. As it moves into the Great Lakes, it'll spin up another surface low. That means another cold front for us potentially a few showers by late Saturday, probably not in time for the Iron Bowl. I think the Iron Bowl remains dry, but some showers could affect Alabama uh, Saturday night into Sunday. And look there, there's another system at the end of the period, uh, late on uh, Monday night, the 27th, into Tuesday the 28th. Now, how does that work uh, in terms of uh, a surface depiction? This is the European at 12Z this morning showing Alabama nice and dry. Should be a warm day. Uh, well, at least a fairly mild day with uh, temperatures in the lower middle 70s, upper 60s mm -hmm. up north and uh, with a, a good bit of sunshine throughout the day. Now, as we go to tonight into Monday, that warm front's going to come to the north. Uh, as it does, a few showers could break out along the warm front late tonight into early Monday. I wouldn't expect that rainfall to be uh, especially widespread or heavy. Surf slow developing there over southern Oklahoma, and that'll be our, name, our main weather maker uh, as it moves into uh, western Arkansas there um, late in the day on Monday. Showers and thunderstorms will break out across northwestern Louisiana, back into eastern Texas. Those will progress to the east, affecting southern Arkansas, uh, northern Louisiana, into the Mississippi Delta. I do think we could see some severe weather out there. And by... Um, you know, uh, Monday evening, 9 p.m., the low is northwest of Memphis. It's uh, tracking into western Tennessee, uh, spreading a line of showers and thunderstorms into eastern Mississippi there by midnight. Those will move into Alabama after midnight and uh, potentially produce the threat of some severe weather over the west central part of Alabama. The SPC recognizes that. And that severe weather threat could continue into Tuesday as we have a little bit of cape and if the storms remain organized, uh, Tuesday morning and then again Tuesday afternoon over eastern sections we could see uh, a chance of severe weather and probably a little better chance as we move into Georgia and upstate South Carolina and western North Carolina. But the rain is moving out of Alabama by, uh, you know, we probably are wet Tuesday morning. It's moving out of Alabama by Tuesday afternoon. We experience clearing conditions, uh, some sunshine on Wednesday, but it will be colder. High temperatures on Wednesday will be in the 50s. Overnight lows uh, early Wednesday morning, probably in the upper 30s 
to uh, lower 40s. Uh, clouds start to increase again on Thanksgiving, but probably get through the day dry. Starting off in the 40s, uh, afternoon highs, upper 50s generally across the area. But a few showers could work their way into parts of southwestern and southern Alabama by Thursday night, uh, becoming a little more widespread, and perhaps pushing up into the uh, I-20 corridor there uh, Thursday night. Again, those rainfall amounts, not heavy. Uh, and not widespread, maybe a tenth of an inch. Uh, surf slow tries to develop in the Gulf of Mexico. It moves to the northeast, making landfall there in the Big Bend area. It's not a tropical system in any way, but it is bringing uh, some rain to parts of uh, southern Georgia and the, the uh, Florida Peninsula. That system moves on up, uh, gets its act together. We stay dry. Um, you know, once we get those showers out of here Friday morning, we see a little bit of sunshine, high temperatures again in the upper 50s generally, stays cool. Uh, but as we get into Saturday, we start off probably partly sunny, uh, increasing clouds during the day as the next system comes in. And uh, showers begin to break out over Mississippi, uh, southeastern Louisiana. Those become a little more widespread as we get into um, uh, Saturday night. We probably get through the Iron Bowl um, with just increasing cloudiness. Game time temperature around 60 degrees. Wind shouldn't be a problem. Uh, it should be a fairly nice day for uh, a football game uh, on the on the loveliest village on the plains of there, the Iron Bowl, the bragging rights for the next 365 days of the year. Uh, it looks like rain increases Saturday night, uh, moves on out early Sunday. We turn colder again behind that. High temperatures on Sunday probably having a hard time getting uh, very far into the 50s. I think we'll get out of the 40s. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a warm day by any means. And as we go out to the end of the period, there's another rainy system coming in Monday night, the 27th. And if you uh, move forward on the GFS and kind of go through time, you're going to see, uh, you know, probably less of a chance of rain during the day on Monday. We'll kind of watch how that develops as rain and thunderstorms move in Monday night, Tuesday morning, move out Tuesday afternoon, perhaps a, a wraparound shower or two. If we get a little bit of an upper low action in North Alabama, that's um, early Wednesday morning. Moves on out for Thursday. Um, the GFS is um, not quite as bullish on the idea of showers uh, in that Thursday-Friday time frame. Um, and it pushes that system through really Saturday afternoon. Now, if this happens, we might deal with a few showers in Auburn. We'll have to kind of watch that, reconcile that forecast as we go through time. Sunday, though, looks like it'll be clearing and colder, as we said. And then as we go into Monday the 27th, 28th, there's that system showing up. The European depicted it, too. Uh, a little bit later coming in on the uh, GFS, but again, that's a pretty decent rainfall amounts for Alabama. We'll take that. Going out further into voodoo territory, into the period, that next system, the uh, 18Z GFS, pushes it pretty far to the south, but brings the system in here uh, by Sunday the 3rd uh, with another uh, decent uh, rainfall amount. This is the SPC Day 3 categorical convective outlook showing uh, a slight risk there. Uh, parts of Mississippi back through a good bit of Louisiana, southern Arkansas, uh, into eastern Texas. This is that slight risk zone. You know, that's that 2 out of 5 on the scale. Um, this is a 1 out of 5 marginal that extends into west central Alabama late Monday night, early Tuesday. Very plausible that uh, storms that do get uh, started up there over parts of Louisiana and Arkansas, Mississippi uh, could become severe as they go through the day. Uh, on Monday into Monday afternoon into Monday evening. Wouldn't doubt we'll see a couple of tornadoes there. Now to kind of check on that, let's look at, uh, let's look at the uh, depiction from Pivotal Weather. This is the surface base cape, 42 hours out, using the 0Z run of the uh, GFS. This is uh, noon on Monday, showing uh, you know somewhere between five and 700 joules of cape there, eastern Texas. Uh, showers and thunderstorms uh, will begin to form. Um, this is what that radar should look like at 18Z. Um, and as we kind of go through time, you see strong thunderstorms there around the Texarkana area, northwestern uh, Louisiana. That activity pushes eastward. This is, uh, this is 3 o'clock on Monday, uh, 6 o'clock on Monday, and then into Alabama by 9 o'clock on Monday. So that's a little earlier. This is the latest run of the GFS. Let's go back and look at what that, uh, you know, what that uh, instability is going to look like 
uh, when we get toward that, you know, 9 p.m. hour. Uh, that's 6 p.m. This is 9 p.m. And you see, we just don't have much Cape to deal with. Um, perhaps there are parts of uh, extreme west central Alabama, Sumter, Pickens County. You know, we're less than 250 joules of Cape there. Uh, that's not very impressive. What is impressive is the wind shear. And how many times have we said that? Uh, if you, you know, advance this across, uh, you know, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, we got some really strong storm relative helicity there uh, by, you know, 6 p.m. Monday night in the northern part of Mississippi. And that is right there over western Alabama. You might have a little sweet spot, uh, southern Pickens, Sumter, uh, you know, perhaps into green uh, where we could you know, get a stronger storm or two and, you know, quite possibly the chance of a tornado uh, there late Monday night. We'll have to watch that very carefully. Could just turn out to be a beneficial rain event. And uh, we would be, um, you know, plenty happy uh, for that uh, to be the case. But that's, um, you know, that's what that, um, uh, that's what that kind of looks like uh, in terms of severe weather. Now, the tropics, we may be done with them in the Atlantic and I'd say good riddance. Um, uh, we didn't get vents. The 22, uh, the potential tropical cyclone 22, just didn't develop, um, and that's good news. Um, and if we look over the next two weeks, you know, kind of speed reading the old GFS here, nothing looks very suspicious over the next two weeks. Some coastal lows there off the uh, east coast of the United States, uh, about three of them. That could really be uh, a preview of things to come as we move into a. Uh, an El Nino winter. Now the good news is that WPC thinks that by um, you know next Saturday night our rainfall amounts across Alabama can be fairly decent. You know not off the scale, but one and a half to two inches of rain across much of the area. We'd take that. That would help our short-term needs. And as we got over the two-week period off the GFS from the 18Z run, uh, showing uh, you know a decent band uh, there across central Alabama. You know generally though anywhere from just under two inches uh, you know to as much as nearly five inches and that would really really help uh, as we go through time uh, these temperatures off the national blend of models uh, predicting you know upper 60s to near 70 today you know lower 70s tomorrow Tuesday looks like it'll still be a fairly warm day um, but then we uh, kind of fall off uh, a little short cliff there. Highs on Wednesday in the 50s, same for Thursday, Friday. Saturday we might get to near 60, and then after that system moves through, we'll uh, fall back into the 50s again and as we head into a cooler pattern. Uh, temperatures at night going to be upper 30s there, uh, Thursday morning, uh, up lower 40s, Friday morning, and uh, that's where we'll kind of be hanging that upper 30s uh, to lower 40s as we go uh, through time. Uh, Weather Brains Weekly Netcast is all about weather. I do not have a guest for tomorrow night. I got to get to work on that. I had uh, three kind of lined up and they fell through. Maybe one of them will show up at the last second, but otherwise, we'll find a great guest for the show on Monday night. We had a great time. Uh, earlier today, Saturday, uh, joining forces with three other weather podcasts to do a disaster relief telethon for the American Red Cross. Had fantastic guests. Go back and uh, watch as much as you can. Give uh, money. We raised over uh, $7,200. We'd love to um, push that number closer to $7,500 uh, before it's all over in the next day or two. But if you get a chance, go to bit.ly forward slash WXPods, P-O-D-S, telethon. And um, you can go back and uh, watch that show. Um, 12 hours of great guests. You can scrub to the 3 p.m. hour. We had uh, Jim Cantori, Ken Graham, uh, the head of the National Weather Service, Mike Bettis from the Weather Channel, and um, also uh, had Jamie Rome, uh, who was uh, who is the deputy director of the National Hurricane Center. Dr. Neil Jacobs, one of his fishing buddies, uh, had him on there, and Dr. Neil was joined by his mom, Judy, a precious, precious lady who had a great story to tell how the American Red Cross uh, totally changed their lives. Uh, in the 1960s. It was a great time had by all. Uh, scrubbed to a great story by Jeff Piotrowski in the uh, 8 o'clock hour. Also, uh, Jeff can tell a story like nobody else. And if you need a little energy boost, you won't need a monster drink. Uh, just go take about five minutes and listen to uh, to Jeff. Well, that's your weather video for this Sunday, the 19th of November. I've had a lot of fun doing it for you. James will be back. 
Oh, glorious. Great great to have James back. He kind of worried us this week uh, with his little medical listing, but we're nice. Uh, we're really excited to have him back, and uh, he'll be uh, at his normal two-a-days all week. Scott will be here next Saturday for Iron Bowl Day. I'll see you Sunday as, uh, as we all pick up the pieces and uh, move forward, getting ready to head into December. But until I get that chance, as I always tell you, keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at.